carpenter bees look like bumblebees. Uh, one of the differences is carpenter bees, the back side of them is shiny black versus a bumblebee. So they do have a different look than a bumblebee. Males cannot sting. The females can sting, but they very seldom do, unless you mess with them and mess with them. Carpenter bees are good for pollination, but they are bad for structural damage on wood. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna talk about today. We'll talk about the difference. Again, do, I'm not promoting the killing of bees, but there comes a point in time when you have, i.e. 600 linear feet of fence, or if you have a wood cabin, um, if you have open exposed raw wood up underneath structures, that's a big problem. Either you have a carpenter bee problem or you don't have a carpenter bee problem. Remember, if you just have one or two little carpenter bees, that's not an issue. Um, you just put a little spray puff, uh, either put repellent, put a little bit of insecticide in the holes, plug it up, it's not a, not a real big issue. I'm talking about infestations. <laughs> I've had those before and that's what we'll talk about today. Welcome to the uh, Memorial Day Carpenter Bee Classic. I'm going to talk about carpenter bees today. Uh, before we go out there, I want to show you something really cool. Outside my fence, my Jack Russell was barking at something and I went out there with a the camera. Once again, turtle egg time. <laughs> Hold on. So I'm just kind of dumping my clippings over here for now. to show you something kind of cool. Look at that. What is that, a boxer turtle? Painted turtle. She is huge. And she's over here laying eggs. I really don't want to disturb her. But she's over here laying eggs right there. I want to leave the poor thing alone. I don't want to get too close. I'll let her do her work. That's what happens when you have carpenter bees. You get woodpeckers. Cassie, those birdies pecking at your fence? Those birdies pecking at your fence? Oh no, that's not good. I guarantee you, probably a hundred people will comment on this video saying, don't kill carpenter bees because they're valuable pollinators. They're, uh, they're in danger. They're, you're going to get all those comments. I love bees. I'm a gardener. <laughs> I have flowers. I have vegetable garden. I love bees. But carpenter bees can be very destructive uh, if you have a lot of wood. As an example, we had a cabin up in the mountains for several years and the entire underside of that cabin had to be replaced the deck the two by fours in there were completely hollow from carpenter bees because the people that had it before us before we bought it didn't treat it and it was completely hollowed out it was amazing i went out there and treated one time came out the next morning and had over 50 carpenter bees on my front porch they, are, they can be extremely destructive. But if you just have a couple of them, it's really not a big deal. That's not what I'm talking about and I'll show you. So they do make um, carpenter bee repellents that will push the bees away without hurting them. And that's probably the way that most people should go. 
Um, I'm because we have such severe carpenter bee problems here. I'm going to be putting up traps and I'm going to be putting up treatments today. But I want to come down here and show you the old fence posts. So as an example, here's just one. So this is carpenter bee damage here. Carpenter bee damage that has been pecked out by woodpeckers. You can usually see it on the back and you can see it right there too. That is carpenter bees. And it's not like I have a little bit of wood to worry about. So my fence starts way over there, goes all the way around, comes all the way around. Don't get dizzy yet, don't throw up. Comes all the way around. What's that, like 600 linear feet of fence or something? It's massive. So uh, here's what I'll be doing. I'll be putting, um, I'll be putting a little bit of treatment on it now while it's raw to protect me. And then we're gonna come out here and stain this fence light. We're gonna do a light stain. I'll be adding a bee repellent to that stain and then uh, putting out carpenter bee traps as well too. So uh, yesterday I came out here and installed the traps. I'll go ahead and show you um, that installation. Traps are a pretty good way to do this because if you put a trap up, that's going to catch an active carpenter bee that's looking to go into your fence. That's why I like the traps. So these little traps, so these are these little carpenter bee traps here. Uh, they come with a little chain on them. I'll put a link to these in the description below. I'm going to have a page with all the stuff I'm talking about. Uh, they just have three little holes on either side and they have a big hole up underneath and what I do is I actually take a permethrin spray I'll show you that here in a minute and I put a little bit of permethrin down the bottom all right so this post over here is just riddled with carpenter bee holes so it only makes sense put this trap where those other holes are so if you see bees working an area on your fence that's kind of where you want to put these traps Again, let me show you how much I'm putting in here. And that's about it. Sixteenth of an inch, just enough to put in there. And one other little tip, if you want to drop a leaf in there, drop a leaf in. Now why do I do that? Because the leaf will absorb that permethrin uh, a little bit better when it evaporates because this will evaporate and that leaf will hold on to that that uh, insecticide better than just plain glass. I know where my damage is being done and it's typically sun is over this way so this area in the afternoon gets shaded and that's what I've found I don't know why but the majority of carpenter bee damage is going to come like under a roof or it's going to be an the backside of fences that don't get a hundred percent sun exposure they don't like to because they're trying to protect the eggs that they're laying and that's what they're doing so I found that if you have a sun a fence that gets morning sun like this one and the afternoon it gets shade that's a perfect kind of situation so that's why I have them here a lot of old carpenter bee damage so I have one here and then up here another one over here now, carpenter bees like thick wood, so they're going to attack these 4x4s, and then they're going to attack 2x4s. Seldom will they work on this thin stuff, because they can't hide their eggs in there. So if you're going to treat, use a treatment or repellent, really focus on, really focus on the thicker beams, in other words, 2x4s, 4x4s, whatever, those are the main beams they're going to... The little planks, they may start burring, on, bur, uh, burring into that, but typically 
That's just not their thing. They're not into the thin, they're into that thicker wood. Now let me take you in and show you another example. I don't think there's enough light, but maybe I inside my shed, carpenter bee buffet in here, I have one little piece of wood that I just threw up here to sort of hang some stuff on. And you can see I came in here, I left the doors open. And sure enough, right away, one came in and started boring in there. Now one way you can find them is <laughs> there was a pile of sawdust down here on the floor. And wherever you see that little sawdust, see where the carpenter bees are gonna be. So I usually keep a can of this around. Now, this is a uh, Spectracide Carpenter Bee and Yellow Jacket Spray. It comes with this little probe. Stick it into the hole. Sort of feel it up into where they're nesting and give it a little spray. It's kind of foamy. Keep your face away from it. And they'll be dead like that. The other thing they make, they make a powder that you can puff into the holes. And the carpenter bees drag with their feet. It drags it in there. It kills the bee and it kills the eggs. You can puff it and then what you can do is you can fill it up with cock or foam or whatever you want. That's another way to do it. But again, I'm not a fan of killing bees, but uh, you got a lot of money on this fence. <laughs> so I'm going to protect it from them. Uh, repellents. Repellents are always the best choice, probably. But if you start to have some a large amount of attacking, uh, then you got to think about doing some uh, some killing. Unfortunately. So here's my uh, peaceful memorial that more construction. Love my bees. This is my human char garden. Again, these plants. These tomato plants here are, what are they, eight weeks old now? Loaded with tomato squash out of here, and I gotta come out today, and I gotta get more. Look at it all. There's just squash everywhere. Let's see who's in here. Ain't there? It'll be interesting to see if that's a bumble or a crooked. Well, it looks like a bumblebee, because so he's got a hairy back. So like I said, I'm not a fan of killing bees, but when the carpenter bee becomes, when you have a serious, serious problem, you have an infestation of them that just goes crazy. Again, I've seen them ruin unattended cabins, raw wood cabins. Uh, on a side note, just for you guys, happy to say we've had a lot of people comment down below about the... We're not using fertilizer in our gardens this year. We're just using this Humichar super compost where we take the Humichar, we activate it, we mix in chicken feed with it, and we mix it into a black cow compost. We let it activate and it gets starts to steam and gets really high. It gets like 120, 140 degrees. So this is a pile that's completely done. This pile is about a week old and it's, it's done because it's cool. But it's funny because a lot of people have been doing this now and they're like, man, I'm so excited. I went out there and my pile is all hot and steaming. <laughs> it works, I'm telling you. It's a great way to have a fantastic vegetable crop, flower crop. So we're using this lawn is absolutely perfect besides all the seed heads that are coming up. Uh, super, super thick, lush. Human char and PGF complete with a little bit of chicken feed. That's what we're doing this year. This is the end of May, and May my lawn, my Bermuda looks like this. Go find another Bermuda lawn in Georgia that kind of looks like this. That's half an inch thick and so thick you can't get down to the dirt. You're not gonna find it. Absolutely cool. If you haven't gotten the Bermuda lawn guide, make sure you get the Bermuda lawn guide. We cover every single subject for Bermuda grass all the way through the year covers everything. We talk about human char, we talk about the fertilizers, we talk about everything. Get the Bermuda Lawn Guide. It's free. Description down below. I'll link to the page and I'll list it up on that page. I'll list up the carpenter bee stuff. I'll list up the human char, all that stuff. It's just amazing. So uh, the front yard I cut yesterday, did a diagonal cut on it and uh, again all we've got, all I've got on this is PGF Complete. 
human char, and chicken feet. That's it. Those are the three things. Gorgeous. Anyways, I gotta go. Sounds like I gotta go help him fix an air compressor. That's my life these days. Talk to you later, Doc. Mm -hmm.